Hello and welcome to the second part of the chainmail tutorial. My name is Manuel and I'm here with Intagma to show you how to put the chainmail we created last time onto a piece of moving cloth. So I intend to do a little vellum simulation of a piece of moving cloth and to put this geometry, this flat geometry that we created last time onto this piece of cloth, I want to use the UV space. So I intend to put some UVs on the cloth and then I want to sample the X and Z positions here and convert them into UVs and then sample the position on the cloth and move the points from space here to the UV space. And this will make the chainmail move with the cloth. But at the moment this won't work because as you probably know UVs usually go between 0 and 1 in U and V directions. And our piece of chainmail here only covers a little piece of the space between 0 and 1. So to prepare first let's create a square piece of chainmail that covers the space between 0 and 1. First let's create more chainmail, say 60 and 70, like so. That's quite some chainmail. And let me make the copy to points visible for a second. It's easier to work with this. And then let's append a transform and switch to top viewport, like so. And then just by scaling this and moving it around, let's say 0 0.9. Here, 0 0.95, let's move this to the 0 to 1 space without touching the borders. Make it a little smaller, maybe 9.3, like so. Now it sits inside of the 0 to 1 space, nice. And I want to create a out now to have something to refer to when importing this. So let's call this out. Great. And I probably don't want to do the sweeping right now here inside of the chainmail. Instead, I want to do the sweep later on, on the deformed wires. So let's go directly to out here. Now this is our chainmail. Before we put this onto something, we need something. So let's create a little vellum simulation. Go one level up. Let's hide this for now and let's create a new geo node geometry. And let's call this cloth. Like so, let's dive inside. And let's switch back to perspective. So for a little vellum sim, let's create a grid. And I want to do 100 by 100 subdivisions. And let's make this smaller, say 2 by 2, like so. Now we will need a vellum configure cloth because we are intending to do cloth simulation. And we will need a vellum solver. Vellum solver. Here it is. Now connect the grid to this port here because that is the geometry to work with. Then all three outputs go into the inputs of the vellum solver, like so. And now this port here is for colliders. Let's go with the tube. So let's create a tube here. Make the radius 0 0.2 and the height 4, like so. Let's make this visible for now. Long cylinder. Now let's transform this. Transform like so and just rotate it such that it is a little slanted because I want the cloth to just move a little bit on the cylinder. And now you can wire it here into the collider port. Now with the vellum solver you can see it picks this up. It shows it to you in blue to indicate that this is a collision object. And now we want to transform our cloth to have an initial configuration. So let's rotate this around maybe like so and then move it up such that it barely does not touch the cylinder. Something like this. Let's see what this gives. If we press play now it nicely simulates. But it is very flexible as you can see. I don't want to have it as flexible, so I go to the solver and up the sub steps to 2. And let's go to the forces and go up with the dynamic scale of the friction to 0.4 to make this collider have more friction to keep this piece from sliding off the cylinder. And maybe we want to go into the cloth and then down here with bend, we want to make the stiffness a little lower. So let's go one level down here and let's see what this gives. Now we have a nice cloth simulation. Very wrinkly, but because of the bending stiffness, it will clear a little. Something like this. If you want to play this back in real time, tick this little stopwatch down there, then it will not be faster than the frame rate that you put in. Okay, so this is our little cloth simulation, but we need UVs. So before we start with the grid, we want to put some UVs on the grid. If you just look at the grid, it does not have UVs. If you press space and five over the viewport, you see no UVs are there. So let's lay 
down a UV project to put some UVs on the grid. And with the UV project selected, go to initialize and press method to best plane initialize. And this will autographically project UVs onto this grid. So that means that after the vellum simulation, we will now have UVs. Switch back to the 3D viewport and you can see from the shading behavior that we now have UVs on the cloth. Okay, let's simulate this and settle it like so. So this is our little piece of cloth. Let's put a null down here and again, call this out. Only the geometry from the first port here goes into this out. That is the polygons. That is what we are interested in. Okay, time to create the UV deform. So now we want to deform the chainmail onto this piece of cloth. For this, let's go up and let's create just another geo node, geo, and I will call it UV deform. Make the cloth invisible and dive into the UV deform. So in here, we will need both the cloth and the chainmail. So let's go with the object merge, object merge, and let's point it to our hex object from last time to the out node. And here we have our chainmail. And now let's put down a second object merge and let's point it to the cloth out. So here is our cloth and here is our chainmail. And now I need a wrangle. So let's put down a point wrinkle, point wrinkle. Now let's call this one UV sample because that is a VEX function that I'm intending to use. UV sample, like so. The geometry we want to process is the chain mail. So this goes into the first port and helper geometry is our piece of cloth. So this goes into the second port, makes the UV sample visible. And now let's see if we can make this wrap to the cloth. But before we do this, let's quickly put down an ends sop just for visualization purposes, because we did not sweep the rings anymore. And so they are filled. This is not easy to understand. So let's go with close view and say unroll with new points. And that makes these circles open and we have splines here. Just for now, we will remove this later. So let's go to the UV sample and see what we can do here. Go over the editor and press Alt E to open up the VEX editor. And now let's see. So in comes the geometry over the first port here, and it has three dimensional position coordinates. And we want to use the X and Z components of these positions to serve as a UV vector to sample the position of the cloth. So let's start with a vector. Let's define a vector and let's call the vector UV pos, like so. And let's set it to be the incoming position at P dot X. That will be the U coordinate that we want to sample. And then at P dot Z, that will be the V coordinate we want to sample. And the W coordinate is just zero. It's just a standard UV vector. So we take these Euclidean positions and use them as UV coordinates. Now we want to sample the position from the cloth. So let's create a new vector and call it pause. And now we want to use the VEX function UV sample. And this function samples any attribute from a given UV coordinate. So first let's specify the geometry stream. In this case, it is one because it is the first port here. It's the geometry of the cloth coming in over the first port. Then we want to tell the function, the attribute to sample, in our case is this P. Now we want to pass on the UV channel it should sample against. And this is called UV, the standard UV attribute, because we created it with a standard projection node. And last but not least, we want to pass on the UV vector. So the position in UV space where we want to sample. And that is UV pause, the vector we just created. Like so. Now this pause is filled with the position on the cloth that is correspondent to the UV position here in Euclidean space. Now we can in theory just put this on the cloth by stating at P. So the new position should be pause like so. Let's see what this gives and it works. This now puts our chainmail onto the cloth. And because we made sure that this is roughly square, it looks exactly like the piece of cloth that we used. So let's see if we make this visible. You can see it is a little bit larger, of course, because the UV space goes up to one, but it works. The problem with this approach is that now everything is totally flat and we lose the depth. So we lose the information that we have in Y because if we go here, the chain mail has some information as you can see. So we want to keep this Y information, but the direction Y here in Euclidean space is on our cloth, the normal direction. So let's sample the Y information and put it in the direction of the normal. So let's sample the normal first. We need another 
vector for this vector and let's call it normal and again we want to use uv sample uv sample like so we want to sample geometry stream one again but this time we want to sample n the normal Everything else is the same. Again, we want to use the UV attribute and we want to sample at UV pause because this is our UV position that we derive from the chain mail. And now we don't want to just transform the points to pause, but we want to add another vector, the normal. So let's add, and I put parentheses here, it's unnecessary, but it makes it easier to read. We want to use the normal and then we want to attenuate the normal by whatever we find in Y. So add P, Y, the Y component, apply, accept, and see what we get here. And now we have a little three dimensionality back, as you can see, because we take the Y component and put it here. Okay, great. So this is all we need. We put the display flag on this end. So you see that now our chain mail is moving with our cloth because it is transformed using the UV space. So now what we can do is we can copy the sweeping from the old hex object, the sweep that we did not use down there. So copy these three nodes, copy, and let's go into our new ED form and let's put this sweeping at the very end here. So instead of using this end sop, let's put this into the sweep. Let's see what this gives. And this sweeps our circles onto our chain mail and creates geometry. And now if we get rid of this display flag here, we now have geometry on our cloth. And we can run the simulation. And of course it's a lot slower because of the sweep operation, but it will create three dimensional chain mail, as you can see here. It looks gorgeous. Okay, fantastic. That concludes how to put the chainmail onto our cloth. So what you created here is a general purpose UV deform operator that takes geometry in the space 0 to 1 and puts it on a different piece of geometry using the UV coordinates. And this is handy in many situations. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you learned something and uh, see you next time. If you like what we are doing, please consider becoming a Patreon. Not only for supporting Antagma, but for access to in-depth courses on topics such as particles, vellum, geometry nodes, and so on and so forth. And at this point, let me say thank you so much to all our existing Patreons. Without you, this channel would not be possible. Thank you.